Okay, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Biz Over Tea with Dr. Lisa. Today, I have Sammy Williams, who is going to talk to us a little bit about customer experience and how to manage your people. And by your people, I mean the people who pay you, not the people that you pay. <laughs> and yeah, sometimes, sometimes it can be a real challenge when you say your people and you only care about one set of them and you really have a whole community that you've got to take care of because the reliance on your brand and the loyalty to your brand comes from the customer experience that you give people. So, you know, Sammy, can I talk? Sure. I was just going to say, you are so right about this because as entrepreneurs, we say we work for ourselves. We don't have any bosses, but our clients is what keeps us paid. So we have to really be mindful of their experiences. Absolutely. All right. So, Sammy, please Hi. tell us who you are and what you do and how we can get to know you better. So, Dr. Lisa, thank you for having me on this platform. I love being able to be introduced to your people, talking about all the people we serve. Hey, everyone. So, I am Samantha Williams. I go by Sammy, and I am the president and CEO of 628 Digital Design, and that is a full-service digital content design and marketing agency. So, I am glad to be here to drop some gems to help your people understand how they can better serve their clients. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so I lucked out. So we have we have someone in the same space who understands how things can happen, how we have to manage our time and manage our folks in order to make sure that business stays stable and grows. So. Yes, and I think it's important that you continue to, we both continue to engage with people in the same space, right? Because we can, um, we can share our experiences. We can talk about best practices. We can say, well, this is happening in my space too. So it's not just me. So it's, I love collaborating with other people in the marketing and digital space. Absolutely. And there's enough, there's enough room for everyone to eat and learn from each other. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so jumping right in, tell me your impressions. What is it like to actively manage your customer reviews? Because we know that our, our, our new clients look to what our old clients say about us in order to figure out if we sh they should work with us. So yes. how, how, why is managing those reviews, those public reviews, your Google reviews, Yelp if you've got it, Clutch City, all those places where people can share their opinion about you. Why is managing that so important for not just uh, service businesses, but all small businesses? So the first part of it is even setting up a mechanism for people to leave reviews. Having, um, like you said, Yelp and Google and all these other platforms set up. Having um, a space on your website where you ask for reviews. Um, reviewing the reviews that come in and making sure that you are using those to better inform and guide your business, right? And you also want to make sure that you are um, combing through, that you're responding, that if they are negative reviews, that you don't just leave it and say nothing, that you respond to the client. I've seen that happen a lot. You want to make sure um, if they are not pleased that you do some customer recovery, right? How some customer satisfaction recovery, how can I better improve your experience next time? Because those people who are watching your interaction as it relates to reviews, they're going to say, oh, she didn't respond at all. This company never responded to this irate customer. So they didn't, they, they didn't try to make that situation right. Or they'll say, okay, now I can see the customer. Now I can see the business is um, taking control of the conversation and they're going to say this is how we're, we're sorry for your experience is one right if you have a negative review acknowledge that they were unsatisfied 
we apologize for your experience. How can we seek to make it better? We will contact you offline because you also don't need to air all of the dirty laundry, right? You can just simply apologize in the public forum and then make it right behind the scenes. And it's really just being on top of it and one, setting it up, setting up reviews, and then two, maintaining and managing it, and three, working on your customer service recovery if needed. Sounds good. I think I think we need to teach a masterclass on review management <laughs> because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I, I, if I'm going to a new restaurant, I'm going to check out a new photographer for the team. Sometimes it's just it, 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 the attitude from the business seems to be like, okay, stay mad. And that's not what we want. Yeah. And that's, that's not, that's not what you that. want. Exactly. Especially it's if it's in a public forum. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit of lag just to touch. So we're going to. Oh. <laughs> I'll edit I was saying, especially when it's in the public forum and mm -hmm. other people are are witnessing this this public exchange. You want to make sure that you are taking control of the situation. You're right in the wrongs. You're mm -hmm. acknowledging that something you missed the ball somewhere according to the customer and just trying to make it right. True enough. So, how do we bring those reviews into our our daily operations. How do you cons consolidate that information so that you can turn that into product development or service development or even a new marketing campaign? So what, that's a great question. And one thing I like to do and I tell my clients, use the reviews that you're getting. Sometimes people just don't know. They're unaware of your process. They're unaware of how your company manages certain situations or how they are, how you may expect your customer to act when you're engaging with them. So one thing clients can do or businesses can do is set up a frequently asked question section on their website, right? Use that information on social media also. Hey, did you know we're closed on Tuesdays because, right? And just share that information, add a tidbit about the, com the company and what the customer can expect when they come into your business, right? You can say, we send all of our clients a pre-service questionnaire so we can learn more about you, right? So that's informing your audience in many different ways. You can take those frequently asked questions and also develop blogs from them and, mm -hmm. and fully explain why you have a practice in your business why this is the customer journey, why this is the employee journey, why you do things the way you do them. But these reviews are great ways for you to show the human side of the company. Because remember, people do business with the person behind the brand, right? So showing that they can connect with you on a personable kind of level, that you understand from their viewpoint, not just you as the business trying to get money, trying to get leads, but also... I understand my clients may have questions about some things. They may not understand what their experience will be like when they're working with me. So let me put that information out there based on the reviews I'm getting. It's clear I need to further educate my customers and let them know what to expect when they come to do business with me. Very good, very good. So I'm thinking about how we one, set up, set up the, the review process, and then incorporate those reviews. How do you plan ahead for that? You know, what does it mean to, to create a communication strategy around your customer support and your customer experience? So the first step is to acknowledge we need a way to a system in place to collect these reviews. We need to have a process in place that maybe you want to do it at the end of a project at the or at the middle of a project when things are really going good with your customers, when they're enjoying it in the beginning of the project or the process when um, they're excited to work with you and they're interested in all things that's going to happen from this relationship. So the first thing you want to do is establish the, the first initial touch point for the review process. 
you want to engage your team, let your team know we will be doing um, customer reviews during this process, during their interaction with our company. So we want you also to, of course, be on your best behavior. We want you to deliver your life's best work, right? Um, and then engaging with the um, the customer on the end when, you're, when it's time to solicit the review and get that information, asking them, is, would you like to? Some people also choose to use different forms of review. So people will say, you can, it's up to you, it's your choice. You can leave a review on my web, a website, you can go straight to Google, you can give me a, a recommendation on LinkedIn, because it all depends on what the customer really wants to do. Like you, as a business, want to get that information. So <laughs> some people say, nope, this is the one place for you to leave a review, I want to put it all together. Other people say, it's up to you, customer, do as you please, right? Um, and then reviewing the reviews when they come in, going through them, acknowledging your, your customers, thanking the customers, even if it's a negative review, thanking the customers because this is a learning opportunity for us and our company. And I appreciate having this experience with you. If it's a great review, thank you. And also some people give um, discounts for reviews, right? So if you provide a review, you'll get 10% off your next service or 5% off, don't forget to refer a friend you can also get a referral discount. So thinking about how you can massage that customer experience so that from beginning to end, it's um, well oiled, right? It's a system, a process you have in place. And then going through those reviews, or whichever platform it is, but you can't just leave it up there and not, not acknowledging. Even if someone says, great service, definitely recommend. Thank them, right? If someone says, horrible service, do not recommend, thank you. Let's continue this conversation offline, right? Uh, and so making sure that there's a, a beginning touch point, an end touch point, and a follow-up if needed. Okay. So it's really easy to, to think about reviews for, you know, services that consumer services, like your, your restaurants, your auto repair, your, you know, your, your even your, your trips and your, your Airbnbs. What yeah. about services, service businesses, like, is it really valuable to have a support plan for a service business? I think it's extremely important because for a service-based business, a lot of times the owner is the face of the business. They're the ones that customers are engaging with. And so I think it's really important that um, service-based businesses put in systems in place to get those reviews, to assess those reviews, to incorporate um, that the, the information received from the reviews into their businesses. Because that's only going to help improve those service-based businesses as they go forward. Because everything that we're doing is to stay in business. You can't stay in business without customers. So if you're not addressing your customers' needs, you're asking them for their opinions. But if you're not going to use those to improve the business, eventually your business is not going to do well. Okay. So keeping with the service business model, what about support. So it's easy to think, okay, I had a problem with my Netflix. I'm going to talk to support, right? Or I have a problem with my, in my Calendly or whatever my, my tech tool is. It's easy to think, okay, I'm going to go to support chat or what have you. Does a service business mm -hmm. need a support plan or su support strategy like that? Absolutely. There should always be a consumer touch point. So whether you're a service-based business, product-based business, if you're a commercial type of business, your consumer may need assistance at some point. And so you want to make sure that you have some type of process set up that they can reach a person. So they can, whether it's a chat, whether it's um, calling on a 800 number, or texting someone for support and assistance, but you wanna make sure that that's available to them. Um, we don't 
generally recommend the bots because we all try to work around the bots to get to the representative representative so you want to make it as personable as possible but you definitely want to make sure that you have some way for your customer to get the support they need to continue using your service or your product okay so we're i'm going to ask about the that company that everyone loves to hate but loves because Let's, let's face it, they do, they do actually make changes based on their support. So what do you think of social support, like Comcast style of uh, offering actual support via Twitter or because I've used it and I found mm -hmm. it to be very helpful. But, you know, a lot of, not a lot of folks in general are on Twitter, for example. So what do you think yeah. of social support, no matter what platform you happen to use? I think social, if you have the bandwidth for it, the social sh support is, it could be a creative way to assist your, your customers. Um, you want to think about your um, capacity because people want, you know, we, we're the microwave generation. People want answers right away. If I, if I contact your company on social media and I say, this is not working or I don't know how to do this, I expect you to respond within a, a, just a few minutes. So you got to make sure that you have people available, at least set the expectation of when the customer can expect um, someone to reply to them. So a lot of companies use the, um, the chat function. And when you start the message, it'll say if people are available right now or it'll say no one's available, they'll be back. You know, I, I've done this with a company. Um, I put in a message on like a Saturday and they say on weekends, we typically typically re respond within three to five hours. Right. Um, during the week, they, they typically respond sooner. It tells you who is um, assigned your ticket um, for your support. Um, and so they're just communicating to the client or the customer, their expectations, so that you're not saying, hey, I, I'm waiting here three hours for a response, and you didn't tell me I wouldn't get a response until Monday, but that communication is there. People also use the um, automated messages. So if you send a message to a company on like Facebook or Instagram, they will have an automatic response. And that automatic response may say, we typically respond within two to three hours. If you need a sooner response, call this number, right? We can help you quicker if you call this number. So also providing different ways for people to get the support that they're looking for. And that brings us back to our FAQ page and informing your people of what, how to do business with you. And I think not enough businesses actually take that step to teach their customers and clients how to do business with them. So, <sighs> speaking I of agree. Two and I <laughs> oh, <Go ahead. laughs> and I agree, and I think it's all about um, communication, right? Setting the expectation um, and, and, and putting that information in different places. We talked about social, right? You can incorporate this into your social media strategy. If you're using the, the social, social support, you should also be analyzing those social tickets so that you can then take that information and say, oh, this was a customer experience. And then using that as to say, you know, you can always reach out to us via social media if you need assistance putting that out there so that they know that this is a way to reach them. When you can put it out there, we're, we're always here to help. Sometimes phone or email may be quicker, right? But letting people know what the expectation is when they, they're seeking support from your company. Okay. So we, we kind of touched on this already, but is no information better than bad information? No, it's no information. No, you need information. You got to put something out there. It's the whole point of social media, right? And, and, the, and, and the, having digital platforms. You have to communicate about your brand for your brand with your customers. So, and, and put information out there. If you're not sure of what to put out, hire an expert, hire someone in the, in the industry who can help you, who can craft content for you. They can review your messaging. They can make sure your messaging is on brand and that is consistent. But 
definitely put something out there. When you have no information, you're you're leaving the customer to fend for themselves, right? You're not t setting the the expectation. You're not letting them know, like, you know, this is how our company operates. This is what we expect from you. They don't know. And we've all had experiences where you kind of, you submit an email and you feel like it goes down this void, this black void of nowhere and no one ever responds to you. You don't know if it was ever received. And so you don't want your customer to have that experience. So give them information, seek help from experts in crafting that information, that messaging that you're putting out there. Yes, we all know of the, the, the black hole of the contact us page. <laughs> Where'd it go? I don't even know. <laughs> Is it, it even was, in the it, film it anymore? A, <laughs> no, but that's another key message too. Just checking your website, right? Because sometimes businesses don't know that their contact us page goes to a black void. They don't know that. So you should be checking your website, doing maintenance, at least monthly or quarterly maintenance on your website. Just click the links, see if the links are working. Make sure there's no broken links on your, your website because the last thing you want is for a customer to say, this isn't working on your website. I tried it and it's not working. So you control the narrative, you get in front of it and you make sure your website is there. You have your frequently asked questions. People know what to expect and your messaging is clear. That that is it right there. I call I call it small business self care. If you don't take care of yourself, <laughs> yeah. you can't have a communication step. You can't have a communication strategy, and you can't. Exactly that it is what it is. So, okay. So as we wrap up, any final thoughts on on crafting a customer experience through support or managing reviews? So final thoughts, set up a, a review testimony process. I, identify the platforms you want to be on, right? Keep it brief, right? When you ask a question, will you, um, will, will you support us again? Will you refer us to others, right? Why or why not? Keep it brief, right? You don't need to know about every single detail. And then also... Identify the platforms you're going to use. Are you using social social support? Do you have the infrastructure to even support that? Do you have the bandwidth, the capacity? Do you have people on your team? Because you need a person, not a bot. So do you have a person on your team who can proactively and consistently respond to reviews, good or bad, that are received on social media? You Setting up your LinkedIn profile, making sure people know they can send you recommendations. Build up your credibility that way. You have Yelp, you have Google reviews. I know many companies who do not have Google reviews set up for a reason. You want to be mindful of that. If you're unable to leave a review on Google, why? Right? So you want to make sure your company has an open door type of presence, allowing people to come in, sh share their experiences and also informing them of what to expect through things like frequently asked questions, using your social media and your blogs to communicate with your customers. And with that, Sammy, thank you, thank you, thank you. Where can we find you so that we can get more of your knowledge to consume? I'm at, I am at 628-628-digitaldesign.co. 628 Digital Design on all social media networks. Awesome. We follow you and we're happy. <laughs> likewise, likewise. So thank you everyone for joining us for another episode of Biz Over Tea. Look forward to more hot drinks as we sip, steep, and strategize. Have a great day. Bye-bye.